If you are feeling stuck on Holy Priest this season, there are a few things that you might be doing wrong, and you probably watch rank 1 players and wonder, what are they doing better than me? Chances are, it has to do with just one ability, Guardian Spirit. We went through hours of user submitted games to find the most common ways GS gets misused or straight up wasted. Luckily for you, we have the solutions and we will show you what common mistakes you need to avoid when using Guardian Spirit. And if you're looking to level up your Holy Priest gameplay, consider checking out our newly redesigned courses at skillcap.com slash wow. There you will find healing, setups, and playstyle guides for Holy Priest that have been updated for 9.2. And if you multi-class or want to pick up an alt, we have over 600 site-exclusive videos ready to fast-track your learning experience. Our website is designed to make you improve, and we even offer a money-back guarantee if you don't see rating gains while actively using our guides. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users in the best learning experience WoW has to offer. Check out skillcap.com slash WoW today. Starting things off, let's go over how Guardian Spirit actually works, including the most common misconception. Guardian Spirit is two cooldowns in one. For one, it's a life-saving CD that can prevent anyone on your team from instantly dying, but I'm sure you already knew that. But what people tend to ignore is its healing increase. When casted, Guardian Spirit increases all healing done to the target to almost 90% with the Lasting Spirit Conduit. This means if you were to cast Guardian Spirit followed by Serenity, you can heal almost any teammate to full health in an instant. Not only that, but Guardian Spirit is castable while stunned, so you can use it on a teammate who has their own healing, allowing them to top themselves while you're CC'd. This is the part that people often mess up, and because of the Guardian Angel talent, you should prioritize using your Guardian mainly as a healing increase rather than a life-saving tool. Ideally, you want to make sure it never ever procs. Proccing GS triples its cooldown and will likely spell disaster for your team. I want you to keep this in mind because this is exactly where low-rated Holy Priests mess up the most. So the question is, when do I cast GS? What should I be looking out for? To answer that, let's look at some gameplay. We will start by looking at a game where a low-rated Holy Priest makes a crucial mistake, and let's see if you can figure out why. Here our priest is playing RMP, and I want you to pay attention to the moment after they use GS, which is coming up right now. So what went wrong for the priest here? Obviously when you pop a CD that increases healing, it has to be followed by actual heals. Our priest decided to hard cast multiple spells in a row, despite there being multiple kicks available, leading to a lockout. This leaves the mage and the rogue to fend for themselves. The mage can't heal the rogue, and the rogue has incredibly limited self-healing options, with their only consistent source of healing in Crimson Vile. But there's an even bigger mistake being made here. Can you spot it? Let's run the clip one more time. If we look carefully, there was an opportunity for the priest to save the rogue by instantly topping them with Serenity right here. Remember that GS Serenity is almost a 0-100 to heal that even leaves a powerful hot thanks to Mastery. It appears our priest wasn't paying careful attention to his Serenity and instead tried to heal with brute force, eventually leading to his rogue's death. This problem is more common than you might think. Here we have a clip from a different priest, and once again, Guardian will be used without Serenity. At this point in the game, our priest has been out of the fight for a while and his shaman is starting to dip low. And it's here that he decides to press Guardian, likely out of fear that his shaman was about to die. But once again, just glancing at his action bars, Serenity is still on CD. This makes the cooldown feel really awkward, especially now since the druid has control over our priest. Even though our shaman was low on HP, the priest really didn't get much healing out during its uptime, meaning our shaman was probably fine without it. To make matters worse, our priest burned trinket during this exchange, and if we fast forward, our shaman eventually dies with guardian still on cooldown. Was this a snowball of the misplay that happened earlier? It's difficult to truly say, but in any case, your mindset should always be directed at combining Guardian Serenity for key moments in the game. To show you just how powerful the Guardian Serenity combo is, let's go over two examples of really high value uses of GS that either save the game or turn the odds incredibly in the priest's favor. This clip begins with our priest getting hit by a full sheep. As they wait the sheep out, they see, with 1.5 seconds remaining, that the mage is casting a re-sheep, and that their teammates have no stops available. They only have one option. Can you guess it correctly? If you said trinket, you were right. The priest is anticipating a potential 20 second CC chain, combining re-sheeps, fears, and a leg sweep. So before the re-sheep comes in, the priest pops their trinket and immediately trades GS and Serenity, which is possible to do in one global. Now, you might be thinking, the Resheep is still coming in, or a Fear or a Leg Sweep, and you'd be correct. The Priest might be unable to heal for the next few seconds, which may be crucial. However, that won't be such an issue due to Echo of Light. Echo of Light is your mastery, which causes your direct healing spells to heal for an additional 10% over 6 seconds, which gets boosted by GS. 
So in this situation, even with the priest CC'd, the rogue has just been topped in an instant and has a huge hot on them for the next 6 seconds. Since GS boosted serenity heals for such an absurd amount, the echo of light hot will be similarly massive. Even if the priest gets hit by a longer CC chain here and the rogue is somehow bursted through the insane amount of heals present, GS would still have saved the rogue due to its cheat death mechanic and the game would have carried on. Let's take a moment to break down just how insane the priest's healing output is here when they combine GS and Serenity. Serenity on average heals around 30k, but when boosted by GS, this approaches 55k. This doesn't even account for the fact that Serenity can crit. With that in mind, heals upwards of 80k are possible, and you probably know that most classes have around 80k health on average. This makes GS boosted Serenity as close to a full heal as you can get. Would you believe us if we told you that it doesn't end there? There's a reason Holy Priests have come out swinging this season, and that is because of their synergy with their conduits and set bonuses. After a priest uses a holy word, like Serenity, their next holy word affecting spell gets buffed by 40%. Not only that, but their extremely powerful potency conduit, Resonant Words, buffs their heal or flash heal, which are both holy word affecting spells by almost 80%. And once again, all of these heals can produce huge mastery hots. If you pay attention to the healing breakdown we have on screen, you can see that your mastery heal can sometimes be your primary source of healing in Arena, thanks in part to Guardian and Serenity. In this next clip, our priest is facing Jungle Cleave and gets hit by the enemy comp's most threatening CC, Freezing Trap. Fortunately, the enemy team breaks the trap. However, this does not stop the high pressure being exerted onto our mage, who drops to less than one third of his HP multiple times. To answer this, our priest trades GS followed by their one remaining serenity charge, and then instead of hard casting while the enemy has two kicks available, they instead opt to trade Apotheosis, which resets all holy words, including serenity. This allows them to follow up with a second boosted serenity, stabilizing his team's HP, preventing GS from getting procced, which again is one of our main goals when using Guardian. As you can see, because the team was stabilized, they were able to then go on the aggressive, allowing them to turn this defensive play into an offensive maneuver and put pressure on the enemy with triple cross CC in classic RMP fashion. So what does this all mean? For one, it means that you should try comboing Guardian with Serenity for a massive 0 to 100 heal. This is important because your goal is to make sure Serenity doesn't proc. One thing we tend to see at lower ratings is people ignoring this combo, and instead trying to brute force heal while using Guardian as a last resort. You should be willing to use GS at high HP simply for its healing increase effect. This does require some attention to detail though, and in this clip we'll break down a priest that panics and uses Guardian when it wasn't even needed. Here, the priest is facing off against Thug Cleave and is being pressured by the hunter. Now, watch how this clip plays out and see if you can spot the mistake. You might be thinking that trading Guardian here was the right call. After all, the priest survives and his team doesn't have to use any big CDs or defensives to save him. But let's fast forward to the end of this arena and observe the consequences of this decision. Here, it's 50 seconds later and the hunter has popped their offensive CD, coordinated assault, and is absolutely crushing our warlock. The priest then gets stunned into a freezing trap and helplessly watches their teammate get whittled down and eventually die. If the priest had their GS available here, they had plenty of opportunity to cast GS in their warlock and along with healing from their boomkin as well as the cheat death effect, the warlock could have survived. If the warlock also had their health stone available, its healing would have been similarly buffed and helped them stay alive. The priest could have even cast their GS when they got hit by the stun before they were hit by the freezing trap. However, none of this happens and the arena is lost because about one minute earlier the priest made a crucial error. Here the priest decides to use GS on themselves, followed by greater fade in an attempt to survive the hunter's pressure. However, the hunter has not popped any offensive CDs and the priest could easily outheal his damage with the use of greater fade and serenity, which he has two charges available to cast. Instead, they opt to cast GS, perhaps out of panic due to overestimating the hunter's damage output. With just the hunter pressuring the priest, the heal from Serenity combined with the immunity from Greater Fade would have been more than enough to survive the hunter's aggressive play. Then, a short while later, when a teammate is in actual danger, the priest would have had GS available to save them and the game would have continued. Here we can see just how valuable Guardian is as a CD, where it being 5 seconds away from being off cooldown can make or break the game. Using it at the right time is essential for success. Overreacting with Guardian is quite common. Let's dial things back with a much simpler mistake in this next clip. Here, the priest is paired with the warlock fighting against a ret paladin and enhancement shaman. As we can see, the ret pally pops avenging wrath, 
which is answered by the Warlock's unending resolve, a 40% damage reduction, and an aura master. You can probably tell what went wrong here. Unfortunately, the Priest also opts to cast GS on the Warlock on top of their unending resolve, resulting in a huge overlap of their major defensive CDs. Overlapping critical cooldowns like this can have disastrous consequences for the future of your team when it comes time to respond to important enemy CDs. In the course of this clip, the Warlock never drops beneath 75% HP for the entirety of their unending resolve's duration, essentially showing that all that needed to be used here was the Warlock's CD. The next time the Priest gets stunned by the Paladin or hexed by the Shaman, their team will not have GS or unending resolve available to mitigate any follow-up, resulting in more critical CDs needing to be traded, potentially leading to a loss. So just as a mini recap, not only should Guardian be comboed with Serenity, but it should also be traded as efficiently as possible. Just like any major defensive cooldown, you should avoid overlapping it with other major defensive CDs unless absolutely needed. Of course, this can be difficult in LFG, but using add-ons like Omni CD can help you keep track of your partner's defensives to let you know if a Guardian Spirit is truly necessary. With that in mind, there's one feature of GS that people often ignore that can affect how you trade it as a cooldown. It's the fact that Guardian Spirit increases all healing done, which means if you're playing with a hybrid DPS, it becomes a really effective cooldown trade into high enemy damage. Playing with one or two hybrids is one of the few times you don't have to completely follow the Guardian Serenity combo. If your partners have enough off healing, Guardian combined with their heals alone can be enough to stay alive, no serenities needed. To illustrate this, we have Beast Cleave Mirror, where our priest gets stunned while their hunter is 50% HP. As you know, after an intimidation stun, a trap is likely headed to your character's feet in order to extend the CC chain. Knowing this, our priest casts GS on their hunter before the trap connects, allowing the team's enhanced shaman to keep the hunter healthy with healing surges while the priest is stuck in trap. This allows the team to save Hunter Aspect of the Turtle and Priest Trinket for later in the game. Aspect is 3 minutes and Trinket is 2 minutes, while Intimidation, Stun, and Trap are 1 minute and 30 second cooldowns respectively. This would put the Priest team at a strict disadvantage when those enemy CDs came up again, so this is a perfect example of an efficient trading of CDs even without the Serenity combo. As you can see, Guardian Spirit is an extremely potent cooldown, but we didn't have to tell you that with the amount of Holy Priests that have been running around this season. But with great power comes great responsibility, and with a cooldown as powerful as Guardian Spirit, this is something everyone needs to understand. With a cooldown so short, it can be used multiple times a game, so using it optimally will ensure you end up winning more games. There are a few things to take away from this video. First, when you use GS, always try to make sure there will be follow-up heals on the target. This could be your own heals or your teammates' heals like Frenzied Regeneration or Shaman's Healing Surge. Second, be careful overlapping Guardian Spirit with other defensives. As a potent healing cooldown, it is often the only CD needed to mitigate kills. Finally, use GS. Don't hold your Guardian Spirit for when your teammate is nearly dead and risk an overlap, or even worse, use it late and get it procced, putting it on a 3 minute cooldown. GS is a great reactive cooldown if the enemy team uses offensives like Metamorphosis, Avenging Wrath, or Combustion, then trade your GS and heal through their damage. And with its 1 minute cooldown, it'll be up again before you know it for the next round of offensive CDs from the enemy team. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. We hope you learned a lot. If you liked what you saw in this video, consider checking out our newly redesigned courses at skillcap.com slash wow. Our site is proven to work, and with a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Visit the link in the description to learn more. In any case, thank you all for watching. See you soon.